local, innovative, award-winning, Cron 4 original programming. And now, the Cron 4 original program, Earthquakes Where the Fault Lies, only on Cron 4. Do you worry about earthquakes? No, not at all. If you're going to worry about earthquakes, don't live in this area. Remember the Morgan Hill earthquake? Oh yeah, I loved it. I really like earthquakes. I know I'm crazy, but I do. In the Office of Emergency Services, we deal with fires. We deal with terrorism events. Weapons of mass destruction, flooding, and earthquakes. The most real threat, the highest probability threat, is an earthquake. Good evening. I'm science editor Brian Hackney. And love quakes, or hate them, the Bay Area is the most lived upon fault system in the world. No matter where you're watching this from, you're within a few miles, in some cases within a few feet, of a potential major earthquake epicenter. As you'll see in the next 60 minutes, as Cron4 News shows you where the fault lies. The faults in the Bay Area, a very complicated system. If we were, say, down in Southern California, all of the plate movement is fundamentally on one structure. It's only one single source of earthquakes. As you come up into the Bay Area, the slip on the San Andreas begins to splay off. It's like you're coming up the trunk of a tree and suddenly you hit the branches and then you go out to smaller branches and then you've got little leaves at the end. The San Andreas system is the same way. We come up towards the Bay Area and first the Calaveras Fault splits off. And then San Andreas keeps going, but the Calaveras then diverges, becomes the Hayward. The Hayward becomes the Rogers Creek. The Rogers Creek becomes the Mahakama. And then part of the Calaveras also becomes the Greenville Fault which becomes the Concord Fault, which becomes the Green Valley Fault. So each one of these faults now becomes a source of an earthquake. So we go from south of the Bay Area, where we fundamentally have the San Andreas, this one big source, up into the Bay Area, where we have now many sources And so we're sitting here in the Bay Area. We really are the plate boundary. The movement between North America, the North American plate and the Pacific plate is accommodated on this set of faults that marches across the Bay Area. But of the dozens of faults that have been identified in the Bay Area, there is one that has always stood out as being the most dangerous. And it's not the San Andreas. Well, the fault that scares me the most in the Bay Area is the Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault definitely makes me the most nervous. It's under freeways, it's under water lines. If you're on top of the fault and the fault moves, uh, good luck. I don't want to be there. So we take to the air from Fremont to San Pablo to show you where the Hayward Fault lies. Geologist Keith Kelson of William Lettison Associates is our guide from the air. USGS geologist Jim Leenkamper from the ground. This is where creep is first recognized on the fault. We're in South Fremont, where the creeping section of the Hayward Fault emerges, paralleling 680, slicing through Mission Boulevard. From this point on, the fault is almost constantly in motion on the surface, creeping along, heading north, first through open space. And in half a mile, the fault comes within only a few feet of dozens of homes. Here, at least, the fault misses them. But in this nearby neighborhood, it disappears underneath homes. A real problem because of that constant creep on the fault. You can even spot the evidence from the helicopter. See that crack in the street? This is the Hayward Fault, this crack in the street? Yes. OK, and so relative to each other, how fast are you moving? About a, a third of an inch a year that way. But if you look at the line of the fault, they go straight into those houses, right? Yes. 
You ain't broke the you? ball in the ground. Right? <laughs> the fault is almost in Phil Howard's front yard. Phil and I have met before. You first moved here in 63? Yes. Does it cause any big problems, broken water no. mains? No. no. Yeah. Not yet. We've not, honey, have we had any problems? No. A slow creep is better than a big creep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a good way of looking at it. Heading north through Fremont, the fault skirts the western edge of Lake Elizabeth. On the ground, look how much it's displaced curbs on one side of Rocket Drive, on the other side, then head straight into this apartment. Do the residents here know that it, this is like close to the Hayward Fault? But the resident doesn't speak English. Oh, no hablo uh, inglés, hablo español. And I don't speak his language. Oh, Farsi, oh. He speaks Farsi, I don't speak Farsi. Still pushing north. Just across from that pond, the Fremont BART station's parking lot is built on top of the main trace of the Hayward Fault. Speeding north from Fremont now, the fault hugs the foothills until it takes legendary aim at its namesake. We are over Hayward. Lovely, beautiful downtown Hayward. Don't forget, the day a large quake hits, six feet of offset is expected near the epicenter. The fact that the fault creeps gives us an idea where the rupture will be. At the Hayward Plunge, that creep has cracked the sandbox wall. And that sandbox curb used to be straight. The fault crosses it, and it's pushed it north about a foot. Just beyond, look at the split in that otherwise perfect stone wall. So imagine what that six feet of offset will do to the scores of buildings it intersects. It goes right through downtown. Old City Hall in Hayward has a trace that clips the building. So now, it's just used for storage. But above and beyond Old City Hall, there are plenty of buildings that are inhabited day in and day out. And when the quake hits, they will almost certainly be split. So we're standing on the Hayward Fault right now, and the Hayward Fault goes right into that building. That's right. It's stunning to see. I mean, look down the top of the building. The fault slices underneath, and you can see the slant in the wall because half of the building is being pushed north by creep on the fault. How many buildings are there like this? I mean, are there, are there thousands, are there hundreds, are there dozens? Well, I, at least scores of them, I would say. Hundreds, I don't know, possibly. I'm Brian Hackney from Channel 4. Yes, do you know the Hayward Fault runs right through the building? Yeah. You do. But not many know that it's possible that we're overdue for the next big quake here. The evidence is in that pond. Which corresponds to the 1868 earthquake? This, this layer? Jim Lean Campers uh, dug into the history of the Hayward Fault surface. buried there and found evidence of four large Hayward quakes in the past 500 years. So what does that work out to, one every? It averages 130 years between earthquakes. The last one was in 1868. So you could say the next one was due in 1998. Scary, except that the 130 year average is plus or minus 40 years. So there's decades of slop in the average. One thing we do know. There is enough energy stored that it is possible to have an earthquake right now. Of magnitude? Six, six and a half or larger. There was tremendous damage to freeways in Kobe, Japan after their quake. Imagine the damage the rupture will do to our freeways. The fault slices 580 at San Lorenzo, and then up the road cuts it again at the intersection of 580 and Highway 13 in Oakland. And from there, Caltrans couldn't resist the canyon carved through the hills by the Hayward Fault. It made a pretty good roadbed for Highway 13, which follows the fault, which veers off occasionally like it does in Montclair, where it plunges directly into buildings. So to follow the fault from Montclair, just follow Highway 13, where it slices its intersection with Highway 24. Now you can see why experts estimate that there will be 1,700 road closures after a big quake on the Hayward Fault. And roads won't be the only problem. Just north of 24, the fault slices the massive Claremont water tunnel and it severs the BART tunnel in the Berkeley Hills. The train only has two feet of clearance on either side. A rupture could easily offset the tracks six feet. You've read our plans very well. That is true. I mean, a seismic event that could cause actual ground rupture is extremely difficult to, to, to guard against. Now, north from the tunnel to where the fault clips the ground to the Claremont Hotel, up to the Cal campus, and the unkindest cut of all. 
the Hayward Fault practically divides Memorial Stadium in two. You can look up the stadium wall and see one side pushing north 13 inches since 1924. At that rate, the west side of the stadium will be pushed into San Pablo Bay in four million years. I've lived here my entire life. Yvonne Fox That's is one of thousands who live within a few feet of the fault in Berkeley. It crosses Spruce Street. Those seams in the asphalt were poured back in 1930. They lined up when they were new, of course, but slip on the Hayward has staggered them so that now, 70 years later, they look like this today. Someday, there will be six times as much displacement in 20 seconds. Then, north from Kensington, the fault intersects so many houses that what you're about to see is inevitable. Down below, follow the curb offset to where the fault splits a foundation so that the bedrooms are on the Pacific plate, the living rooms are on the North American. And off it goes until finally the Hayward Fault disappears off Point Pinole somewhere under the waters of San Pablo Bay. Brian, as you say, how worried can we be? Seriously, like Darlene says, the house has been riding well. From Phil Howard's intersection in South Fremont to Yvonne's in North Berkeley, it's 35 miles. That's about the length of the rupture expected in a magnitude seven. You know what? I believe in crashing and burning in the place you love. That's my philosophy.